Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Time Capsule. It's a new podcast we're doing to capture our thoughts in the moment when uh, a big pop culture event happens so that we don't have kind of the uh, benefit of hindsight. We're just kind of capturing our raw thoughts at the time, and maybe one day we'll look back and we'll, uh, we'll have a different set of context, but I thought it'd be an interesting experiment. Uh, my name is Rob Moden. Uh, with me today is Brian Edwards. Say hi, Brian. Hello. Hello, everyone. And also Jordan. Jordan is the co-host of the After SNL podcast, our bitter rivals, and uh, <laughs> he uh, he's also been a writer for Complex, for Paste, uh, some Toronto outlets, I believe. Yeah, and Pat and the Toronto film scene. Yeah. Um, so thanks for having me on, guys. Absolutely, it's uh, it's fun to I finally did. kind of collab in some way. Yeah. So this week has been crazy. Um. A weird, weird week where I don't know if necessarily we saw this coming a week ago when the media was more focused on the kind of fun gossip of, uh, I know Brian and I and some others like enjoyed the article about the marketing emails that are just horrendous, the, the, the PowerPoints that leaked, all the, the Spider-Man Marvel talks was a big thing for a week, the uh, possibility of a 22 Jump Street Men in Black crossover. But this week, uh, the Sony hacks transitioned into a, a vague threat of a 9-11 style attack on any theater showing the interview. And in the 48 hours following that, we went from the movie was still going to be released to James Franco and Seth Rogen are canceling press and the premiere is canceled mm -hmm. to uh, Sony offering theaters the chance to withdraw the film without necessarily having any penalties incurred to all the theaters basically dropping it, including Cineplex here in Canada for us, and Sony eventually pulling the movie and saying they have no further plans. Then in the following days, Obama got involved saying it was a mistake to pull the movie. It's crazy. The, the Sony CEO, I think Michael Linton is his name, was interviewed on NPR saying... Uh, they have not caved, and they're still looking to distribute it digitally in some way, at least, but all video-on-demand services are turning them down, which is a crazy thing to say because they own Crackle. Uh, um, and saying that he didn't honestly think to ask Obama about his opinion, which is a weird thing. So it, it seems like a, a crazy week, uh, even outside of pulling the movie and how that may affect... Comedy going forward, there's a lot of discussion about free speech this week. How does that affect a, a business organization? I want to go to Jordan first because Jordan is in the privileged position of having actually seen the movie. He's and I want to know, him. yeah, and I want to know how that might have uh, informed your perspective this week as you saw all this news coming in. No well, spoilers. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, I was writing my review this week, and as I wrote it, I had to keep changing the facts that were in it, because every day the story would change, as yeah. regards to like Sony. So, when I had left the theater a month ago after I saw it, I had disregarded the film, I didn't like it, it's, it's fine, it's fine. And I like to preface it by saying, I love Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg and what they're doing for comedy, it's very original. There's some issues with it, but they're, they're doing a lot of great stuff. At the very least, their concepts are great. Yeah, the concepts are great. The execution, it's up to you. If it, The brand of comedy, I think, is the problem. If it's not what you like, whatever. But mm -hmm. I can't disregard what they're doing. Um, but now, I'm in the position where I may not have enjoyed the movie particularly, but if your movie pissed off Korea, <laughs> and it exploded into this whole thing, I have to have some sort of respect for you. Yeah. So I guess my review or my consensus of the movie is that it's not very good. Uh, my main issue with it is that the satire isn't very strong and the comedy isn't very strong. So if you're a satirical comedy and neither of those are particularly great, it just falls somewhere in the middle. But again, it's, I have this weird respect for them that the movie might not be great, but you just broke a studio and yeah. you kind of initiated a new war. <laughs> <laughs> Is no like you can say that nobody else that in comedy. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, Brian, what are your thoughts? I like 
two, three weeks ago when the Sony hack started and you're getting emails, everyone thought they're kind of funny, it's cute, you're seeing Channing Tatum laugh about how his movie did so much better than industry insiders expected, and that was cute. And you see some embarrassing things, and you're like, oh, well, it's not really for us, I feel bad in a way, but I mean, it's not that big a deal. Uh, it's things we didn't need to see, you shouldn't have seen, but whatever, it wasn't doing really any big harm as far as, you know, at that level. And even as, what, Monday, Seth Rogen's on the Colbert Report talking about the movie, I was like, okay, like, I binged watch them after it had all happened. I go, oh, this is weird. This is literally, like, the day before. And then the premiere's canceled. You're like, what? That's crazy. Yeah, and then and then major chains are playing, go, this is insane. What's going on? It's this is like, silly little movie. They've done worse with dictators and real-life political figures before. Why is this the thing that's, you know, drawing all this ire from this country or this small factor in this country? It just didn't make any sense, and then it just got more and more serious. And then people are talking about freedom of speech, and people are talking about safety of you know customers and employees, and it's this big debate. People are saying, you should have done this, you should have done that, and it's insane. I can't believe this is the movie that people are you know going to proverbial war over, maybe literal war. It's, uh, James Franco finds himself at the center of some bullshit yet again. Yes. It's like, <laughs> we keep letting him win, which is the real <laughs> And it's such an issue. We I love can't that. Let like James it. Franco win. No, we can't. <laughs> Give in to James Franco. I don't disagree with what Cineplex or Regal Cinemas did because clearly, as we found out this week, the threat was probably kind of maybe real. Um, the whole video on demand thing, though, is weird that nobody will pick it up. Yeah, at least I, that's what Sony claims. It's, yeah. It, once they announced that they were pulling it, my first thought was, oh, they're going to wait. They're going to wait like two months, three months, whatever, release it somewhat quietly a little bit later. That's why they're not doing anything right away. That's why they're, they're not saying it's dead. They're just saying, we're not showing it right now. It's like, okay, they're just going to bide their time, hope it kind of blows over, then release it later. But, and then that's when people are like, oh, just put it on video demand. I go, yeah, but I think they still want to release it theatrically. So it didn't surprise me. But then they said, no one wants to pick it up. I go, well, that doesn't really make sense. No, it doesn't make sense, but it's also a money issue. So people who are saying, well, let's just put it on demand, there's still a financial cost yeah. because uh, studios have to agree with theaters on how we're releasing it, how it's going to cost, all that shit. Yeah. And we don't know exactly how much, I think, stuff is making via VOD yet to say, okay, we're going to put this $75 million movie exactly. on yeah. demand. So it's yeah. not that easy. I think Sony will probably, in January, drop it, like a Beyonce, and just, like, <laughs> here it is. Now yeah. you can go. It's safe, maybe. <laughs> they they uh, don't need to do any publicity for it, clearly. No. They could just say, it's out right now. Yeah, they started a war. I think the publicity is there. Yeah, exactly. So, Everyone we'll wants to see it if they can, because they can't see it. Like, my friend was over for dinner last night. He's like, I want to see it. I didn't want to see it before, but now I want to because I can't. Well, it's brilliant, but the thing is, I feel like whenever it does get released and people see it, they'll be like, "That was it." This, this, yeah. Yeah. right? I, I, uh, I wanted to address there. There are a couple of uh, theories like floating around on the internet, at least. The first press release saying that they're canceling it was very clear to to uh, explicitly specify the theatrical run. It wasn't yeah. being released. At least they they were not going through with the theatrical run. And I think that might have it might have even had a window of opportunity to to say, well, we never said it's never going to theaters. Yeah. I think since then they've said maybe never theatrically. I feel like I, I read that, but it it's somewhere in the mess of like maybe never theatrically, no further plans, which could mean yeah, a, a, a definitely never, or it could mean we're not planning anything right now. Uh, solid, uh, solidly, I'm coming up with weird uh, adverbs today, and oh. um, there's also kind of these warring rumors about like the insurance only kicks in if they scrap the movie entirely, not if they just scrap the theatrical distribution. Oh, yeah. uh, I've heard that. Um, there's also BitTorrent has come forward and and suggested uh, or put up an open letter that Sony can put it on their BitTorrent Bundle uh, per platform, which is a uh, pay platform. Um, but Sony yeah, hasn't responded to who that. Who pays for torrents? 
Apparently, 140,000 artists use it, according to this big porn person. I don't get it. Mm. But it, it's it's a thing where I I honestly think that they are first trying to judge the timing of which to to let this go without uh without. It, it's a weird thing where they have to both not let the audience go away entirely. Mm-hmm. Where like in a year from now. Will, like fewer people will be have as much momentum and adrenaline to watch it immediately, yeah. versus if they released it next week, North Korea is just going to get pissed again. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing. Um, well, they have to play it like you're saying. They have to play it right, and I think they're pressing pause, and then when the time is right. Yeah. Now, talking about this being a silly little movie that I, uh, you, you guys both touched on, I do want to ask, uh, what, like, is, is this, I'm trying to think what question to ask first, because there's one where it's like, is this the worst that North Korea has ever been treated on a film? Jordan can actually answer, do you think this is, say, worse than Team America, which has also been kind of pulled in the wake of the interview? I don't think it's worse. I don't, th- I think it's, Fair. I think if anything, they give Kim Jong the character that's in it at least uh, a decent chance to defend what's happening. Um, I don't think it's like terrible. Um, it's not great, and <laughs> clearly Korea is not pleased. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but no. I, again, it's not anything to like to have all of this happen for. Yeah. And I heard it was actually kind of a very humanizing performance from yeah. Randall Park. It, it made him seem like another bro. Like it uh, apparently at some point it maybe turned into Seth and James and Kim Jong Un kind of hanging out as as three guys in their late twenties, early thirties. Yeah, bro. this is not a spoiler, but it's literally like it's a bro comedy with Kim Jong. <laughs> okay, and, and it turns into like them figuring each other out. Him peeling the layers back on Kim Jong, or at least James Franco, they spend a lot of time together. So, and that's what the problem is with the movie, is that you're not really satirizing this figure. You're turning him into, like, a James uh, James Franco exterior character. Like, it could just be somebody else in a yeah. Seth Rogen production. That's what the issue is. Because I heard, or I read an article that was that... The problem with the movie might be that they had heard it humanizes Kim Jong Un instead of, at least in Team America, it does paint the original Kim Jong Il as a uh, actual evil here. dictator, evil, crazy, and so maybe that was one of the reasons besides Kim Jong Il's actual love of films that, or or just that nobody took North uh, Korea as seriously at the time because they did put out some threats about Team America um, versus in the interview where Kim Jong-un is treated as a fallible, normal, flawed person, at least to a degree that a Seth Rogen and James Franco movie yeah. can have uh, a, a nuanced character like that. And that was going to be the thing that maybe caused internal politics to shift within North Korea where people could start thinking of Kim Jong-un as a normal person who maybe rather than is, the infallible dictator leader. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this is not a spoiler because it's in the trailer, but they spend a good portion of the movie singing Katy Perry's fireworks. <laughs> well, actually, I that song also features in. Uh, I I honestly think it's out there at this point, and it's just a, a treat as a fact that Kim Jong Un dies in the movie. Um, <laughs> well, <clears throat> And the uh, the clip that's leaked onto the internet of uh, his explosive death set to Katy Perry's fireworks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Was that, so have you seen that? Was it different? Uh, yeah. It's, no, it's the same thing as what's in the movie. But uh, it that's what I like. If you're what you're getting at is that they're humanizing him. They use a Katy Perry song to do so. So again, this is the movie they're fighting over. <laughs> yeah. Um. Where does this take us in terms of uh, comedy and uh, free speech and whether or not, you know, Sony as a corporation has to uh, hold any value in the idea of America as a land of free speech and 
uh, we definitely need to release this movie for democracy. Well, they've already canceled the Steve Carell North Korea set movie, right? Yes. So Which is that's... based on a uh, autobiographical graphic novel that I think is yeah. also being pulled from reprints. Oh, of geez. course. <laughs> yeah. When it rains, it pours. Yeah. Um. I think. I think it. Well, sorry. The question again was, how is this going to affect free speech? Free speech and or comedy. Yeah. I think it will affect comedy. I think clearly we're already seeing the ramifications if you're pulling a Steve Carell. Uh, type vehicle, not that I think it was particularly comedic, but I, like, it's it's scary because the only genre right now in film that's va- that's attempting some sort of originality mm-hmm. is comedy. Yeah. And if you hear that, what are we going to get as a result? It I, reminds me, I mean, if it's not the same scale, but it reminds me, post 9-11, the worry that comedy's dead, you yep. can't be funny anymore, and it was that for a good little while, a couple of weeks at the very least, where everyone was very trepidatious sure. about doing anything funny that starting live. Is it going to come back? Are these movies going to come out? Like, what are we going to do? Can we ever make fun of it? Can we have jokes about it? And while it's not like completely a laughable subject matter anymore, people do make 9-11 jokes. People do... People have saw with Chris Rock on yeah. SNL this year. <laughs> we, we've seen comedy come back and come back. Well, I think there's going to be the cancellations, the trepidations, North Korea is going to be a taboo subject for a while, at the very least. Uh, but I think I don't think it's going to permanently affect anything. If anything, it will shift things for a little bit. Then who knows what will come out of it afterwards. But I don't think it's a permanent status. But well, it, go ahead. I don't think it's permanent, but I think winning with a studio, I yeah. think it's going to be a couple of years because everything takes effect, right? So we're going to see, especially Sony, where... I actually was really enjoying the emails when they were being leaked because, yeah. like, you don't see that shit ever. Yeah. You it's never see side that. Of people. You don't see George Clooney be like, "Me, I'm scared about the Monuments Men. I don't think it's going to do very well. Uh, you don't see Channing Tatum react, <laughs> that it, which was amazing, right? So yeah. it was picking the veneer off of Hollywood. But then this happened, and this will have an effect Ooh. that'll Ooh. last a little while, unfortunately. Yep. I agree. Is it different that 9-11 at least was an event that happened that we were completely taken by surprise and uh, it had kind of a wave of consequences in terms of people were very shy to uh, do any comedy, as Brian said, but it was uh, a, an isolated happened. event that yeah. happened and there was a threat that another one might happen, but it was a very kind of vague, vague threat. Yeah. Versus this is we gave in to, or Sony gave in to, or the movie theaters gave in to, just a threat of a 9-11 with the claims that this threat is valid as long as the, as the interview or similar concepts, anything that might provoke North Korea, if any of that comes out, then the threat is back on. It's still a lingering threat. Mm-hmm as long as you consider it valid, which is an entirely separate argument about whether a company that can pull off hacks and, and is very impoverished can actually pull off terrorism attacks. But just the, the fact that it's we're in this kind of uh, cloud right now of if you step to over the line, we are going to attack, and, we, and that is the threat that Sony and, other, uh, and the industry is facing. Yeah. I think so. I think the because it hasn't happened yet, but could happen is why that seems the majority of the reaction is oh just release it like just give it up for free or put it on demand rather than just oh no yeah no we gotta be wary of terrorism because they haven't done anything yet. It seems most people are like no don't give in don't give in freedom of speech. That seems to be the the ringing uh, sentiment. But I think what you what you were saying is that there's that lingering threat, right? So. Mm-hmm. Again, they can pause it for now, and then, again, this can all happen again in a month, right? About the same movie, you mean? Yeah, with with the interview. So I could ideally see Sony just scrapping it, which makes me feel bad for Seth Rogen, not for James Franco. It it made me feel, like, legitimately angry, because I just didn't think I would live in an era that (laughs) this happens. This seems like something that would have happened years and years ago. I yeah. was just reading that Pat Oswalt excerpt about him 
uh, doing that live, trying to do those live readings of the uh, of Jerry Lewis's Holocaust clown comedy, mm-hmm. which uh, uh, was released but then got banned immediately, and they've basically tried to hide it forever. Yeah, I it, it seems in, in it seems like it's a, a step we've never taken before, uh, a step backwards, and uh, that it is. A corporation rather than the government getting, giving in means that there's just enough gray area that uh, I think Sony is comfortable with being, uh, with at least kind of being the, the the people who say that no, we're not going to release the movie. Like it's we're we're not beholden to uh, uh, carrying these North American ideals of yeah. freedom and of speech and blah 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 blah. Well, it's also the type of studio we're dealing with. It's Sony, right? Right? Yeah. So with those, we saw how fragile it currently is. Mm-hmm. Whereas, it could have been a different story if it was Disney or if it was uh, Paramount or if it was Fox. Where but Paramount just pulled Team America. Yeah, which was a different thing. Which I, that actually pissed me off more than the interview being pulled. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, a metaphor for how we've kind mm-hmm. of set back at least and then two you years. Pull it again, <laughs> like that also shows. Where we are in 2014, uh, comedy-wise, and where we were 10 years ago, and maybe how much freer we were then? It, I don't know. I think it'd be the opposite, exactly. Yeah. How much do you think the decision to pull it, or the, the scare of it, was because the hacks happened first? If it had just been the threat without any of the hacked, leaked emails or any of that happening first, do you think it would have had the same reaction? It's hundred percent. The hacks came first, so they pulled. They, yeah, if but the you hacks think... hadn't happened, if the hacks hadn't happened, they wouldn't have pulled it. You don't think so? Yeah, I don't think so. Jordan might disagree. No, I I think I agree with you guys. It uh it 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 showed that they had some sort of power over Sony. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. and the vulnerability geez. in some way it doesn't matter if it's a physical threat vulnerability. The fact that they could get at them in any way just kind of spooked people enough. Yeah, so it doesn't. In a way, it doesn't even matter that North Korea has been threatening warheads or nuclear weapons or whatever forever, and they've never kind of delivered on those threats. Mm-hmm. It, it as long as they show that they can have some sort of control, people don't necessarily want to ask the question. Well, are they actually capable of taking this to another level? Yeah, there's a reason not to just dismiss them out of hand because they did this huge thing. Hmm. It, it it did seem like uh, Sony especially what it was. Oh, we just lost Rob. <laughs> All right, so we'll just take it from there. He'll be back in two seconds. <laughs> what did you think? Did you think it was going to go this far when the hack started? Like what about two three weeks ago? Did you see it? No, like even I didn't. remotely happening? No, I didn't think it would happen at all. Um, but I didn't think it would. No, I didn't think it would get this far. As I said, I was enjoying those emails so much, and then it turned into this. We were just talking about, like, did you think it was going to happen? Uh, two weeks ago, did you even possibly foresee something like this? And I don't think anyone could have. No, it, 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 I mean, it seemed clear what North Korea's goal was, assuming that, as it seems a decent amount of evidence points to, it was North Korea. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. it, it seemed clear that their end goal was they wanted the interview polled, and it wasn't until they dropped the 9-11 reference that... That became an actual vibe, uh, something that could actually happen. Um, until then, it was just like kind of making fun of what, in retrospect, was unfortunately the perfect company to uh, be threatened because they have all these kind of like fragile parts. They've they've been a weak uh, studio for years. Years, yeah. The, this uh, all the marketing emails that came out was uh, there were some slides that were straight up just like 2010 wasn't a good year. Look at these movies, and you look and you go, that was a weak year. And like Spider Man's been a mess for them all year. I don't think they've had a major hit uh, at all. And so 22 kind of, Jump Street, but even that. That's was true. Really- yeah. But that, that's the hit they, they could have. Mm-hmm. That and and so the fact that they were able, like they were just in a position to have their arm twisted, twisted. and uh, uh, be embarrassed. And uh, even before all these emails leaked, uh, I from vaguely following along with say AV Club and Deadline and Vulture and the rap 
you know that Amy Pascal, who is the head of Sony Pictures, is kind of both uh, uh, feared and mocked. She she's kind of in a in a position where she she's on a careful balance of power. That if something upset it, then she might be in need to kind of pump the brakes and and uh, and secure her own legacy. I, I don't know if the, what I'm saying makes a lot of no, sense, but it was just it was a perfectly fragile system. Yeah. What What do you think this means for Sony, like their internal structure? Like what happened? What do they do now? Apparently they're faxing. They're faxing documents. This is what like I how heard. Did this yeah. shift? I mean, there's going to be the emergency. Just keep everything the same for now. Don't react. Don't change anything major. I'm sure, but I can't imagine that in a year there's not going to be a major. We need to look at this from top to bottom. We need to shore the, up something. I don't know. The thing is, is that the general public doesn't know what actually happened. They're aware of the interview stuff, but not yeah. the, like, really the emails. I've had to explain it to several people who aren't like us or yeah. involved in this stuff. But I agree. I feel like there's going to be a meeting <laughs> or yeah. a conversation. We'll talk or, over after Christmas. Definitely. Yeah, like, well, like, let's let it settle. Yeah. But so much has been exposed. And again, I was, I was glued to it. It was great. It was showing the veins of of mm -hmm. a major studio, as major as Sony is. Um, and now, I think you guys said it perfectly, where they were so fragile that it just took that one thing, and looks pretty aware that the Spider-Man franchise is currently a mess, but the fact that they're willing to sell it to Marvel, or considering it, or recasting Andrew Garfield, says a lot. Which is a mistake. He's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I could go back in time and put the... the the uh, Mark Webb actors in the Sam Raimi movies, I would. That would be my time machine. The whole other debate. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got two two anti Raimi people. Okay. Um, it did seem like, yeah, it just because of how precariously Sony was perched atop, like it it's mm -hmm. still a major studio and it still had power, but it maybe was running out of uh, leverage in terms of, uh. uh having money to, to fund projects or like uh, it seemed like there were some fights that maybe they had turned off uh, some of their creative partners like Aaron Sorkin has done a few movies for them and now is moving to Universal. Blah, blah, blah. It, it, it seems like they were always reacting to something even, in the yeah. mo uh, even before this all went down. Like they were all kind of on their toes, not knowing where to go and now I, I feel like they're they're just going day by day and trying to I, I think they would love nothing more than for this to all flame out in a month and for nobody to care, and then they can go back to trying to act as normal. But I don't think there's a long-term plan in goal. Right? I think it felt like earlier in the week that's what they were trying to do. They were saying, okay, we're not doing anything with it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But people at the press and the public kept pushing them for more details. Where are you going to put on demand? Are you going to release it later? And they said, eh, okay. So they kept coming up with like half answers to like stuff like the video on demand question and weird, nonsensical answers. Like, they were just hoping it would just go away for, like, two weeks. Like, answers like, where I think the CEO might have just said something in the moment and then yeah. had to go back to the office and go, guys, how do we do this? I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, exactly. I just, okay. I just promised VOD. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, the president just yelled at us. Well, we got to say something now. Didn't like, Amy Pascal or Sony itself hire the inspiration to scandal the actual woman? I'm not sure about that. I, that's I, what I, I heard. heard right that, yeah. that they hired. Yeah, they hired the real life Olivia Pope or something. Which is fucking amazing because <laughs> it's just like world. Which colliding. is which is a movie they should make. Like yeah. this should be a movie. I don't you know, know how many times I've heard the. We'll I don't know how many times I've heard the uh, the interview too is going to be about James Franco and Seth Rogen trying to stop their movie from not being. <laughs> heard that so many times. It's Where. Yeah, what what else is there to say? Is there is there I I mean, I'd love to hear a bit more about the movie. If there was uh anything that you think in once it got released, it might have any specific scenes besides maybe the death scene that would have caused even more controversy or No, I'm literally telling you it's such a soft <laughs> satire that like I'm trying to remember. I even forgot he died. Like I forgot that <laughs> happened. But I'm telling you there are scenes where they're singing fire 
fireworks. They're playing basketball. There's, like, Lizzie Kaplan, who I love and is great, but is sorely underused in this. Um, it's just, a, like, there's so many cameos. Like, okay, I'm not going to spoil them. Federline, like, Federline for $5,000. <laughs> we know that. It's just, I, again, I'm, it's I'm becoming repetitive, but it's there's nothing in it that is offensive, and I don't understand how we Why? got here. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I wish it was such a strong satire that it could be like, yeah, this... I know why this pissed people off because there's so much here that's offensive. But again, they sing Katy Perry songs. Like, do you think maybe it was like uh, an opportunity? Like if they wanted to do something at Team America, but they couldn't at the time because I mean, there's something like you couldn't hack let them. But because they could do it now, the hacking, and that okay, we'll make this our push because we can do it now. We can scare them first, and then we can do that. Oh, from but, North Korea, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also, look how far we've come since then. But it was also, like, Team America's puppets. And maybe it looked yeah. less offensive. <laughs> yeah, there's that, yeah. Um, it was also a smaller movie, yeah. kind of. Um, it wasn't as high profile as this. And I think as soon as this was announced, people were kind of, like, tap, uh, timid mm-hmm. about it. And they were like... Really? Ooh. Yeah, like... But that, that's what also what it comes down to. So while I give Evan Goldberg and Seth so much kudos for getting this funded by a major studio, which they in turn took down, um, <laughs> I think if you're going to green like this, you should probably know that <laughs> you're yeah. playing with fire. I right? did like Seth Rogen's response. Why don't you just make it someone else, like a, a fictional character? And his response was, it's not funny. It's not well, as funny. Well, it's not as funny as it's real. So I like that because like, instead, of, no, we're not going to. We're not going to change it. We're not going to. We're glad. We're glad we didn't use a fictional person. It's not as funny. Well, I think that's, okay. that's, that's at least that. true of Team America. If Team yeah. America hadn't used real actors, hadn't used real world leaders, it wouldn't have been as funny. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. But this is where again, like that Seth Rogen response is why I give him so much respect and like he has balls and he's not backing down. He's kind of been absent for the last few days. Like, his last tweet was that he saw Birdman. So, <laughs> I don't know. I Like, I, again, I genuinely feel bad for him. Yeah. Franco's um, shown up. Franco was on the Colbert finale. He's been in some Franco Instagram won't photos. Franco do anything. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't, he, he seems a little distracted, but that just seems like James Franco in general. Yeah. Yeah, well, look at his directorial stuff. Or don't. <laughs> uh, I... I think I said something at the very top of the show, but basically the fact that it's such a, a small movie and it's a shitty movie, I it seemingly, like, I or mediocre in your mediocre, words. Mediocre. Okay. But it just seems like it... <clears throat> the, the argument I've been trying to make to people in real life is that it makes me feel more... If this doesn't happen, the terrorists win than yeah. I have ever been in my life because it's a, <laughs> it's a dick and... and it's a, yeah, dick it's a and bro fart. comedy. It's a dick and fart movie, and if America can't do dick and fart movies without what pissing somebody off, exactly. exactly. Not we, because we're Canadian, but <laughs> like if it if it was a, a some sort of documentary about North Korea, and they didn't want this, some secrets coming out, or if it was like a major, like a, a heavy drama, a, like a Black Mirror type, like what if we actually had to uh, uh, assassinate somebody? Like it, it takes like kind of that slightly ridiculous uh, concept and plays it completely straight, then I would maybe see... Kind of understand. Kind of understand. It's like, oh, this seems like it's just trying to be provocative. But no, it's just it's just a dumb comedy. Yeah, It's just a silly comedy from Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg that is not offensive. It's not mean. It, it uh, makes Kim Jong-un feel like a friend. <laughs> People are pissed off, which I think, again, like, it's angry that we can't release this, but it's kind of amazing that this soft movie got so many people enraged. The lightning rod. Yeah. Somebody, I think rod. Ken Jennings tweeted, like, I'm not comfortable with James Franco being in the history textbooks for my grandkids. No, <laughs> not either. I'm not at all. He's winning. 
<laughs> it's also this weird thing for people like you, Jordan, who have seen it. Who like like my friend Josh saw it too, and he says he's he's his parents are talking about him to their friends, saying that movie no one can see. Josh saw it. I'm like, so like upset. I didn't see it. And now like you, <laughs> you make your chance, bro. Jordan, you got to see it. So you're like a quasi weird pop culture celebrity with like I've seen the movie, everyone. <laughs> No, Bask in my glory. This week, you guys messaged me to come on the show, which was great, and I'm loving this, but someone else messaged me that is like a local Toronto film critic, uh-huh. um, and they're like, they were trying to set up a thing with the people who have seen the yeah. movie, and they're like, I'm like, I'm nobody, obviously, but like, it's this <laughs> weird position that I'm in where I'm like, I saw this, <laughs> and no one there's, did. There's going to be like a documentary, maybe funded by Kickstarter. It's going to be on Netflix or something in like five, ten years. It would be like the people who saw Interview. This and is just why, where they are in their lives now. How have they been exactly. affected by the interview? Exactly. This is why I don't want them to release this because I'm in this power, power position. You don't want to be Cartman in uh, the South Park movie just going like, I saw the fucking movie. Who wants to touch me? <laughs> <laughs> who wants to fucking touch me? It's It's a weird... Like, it's so weird. It's such a weird The Onion almost story. Yeah. Oh, like, 100%. How the world, you like, could hypothetically work, but you're like, that's ridiculous. But a uh, uh, fun little th- thing to think about. It's just... And I, I think it was... As much as... We came up with the idea for the ca- time capsule for the end of Colbert, but I think this is exactly what... Yeah we wanted for because it's like we don't know where this is going. It we seems so insane in the moment. From now. Like this this in a week from now, this segment could be like look how much has changed. Yeah. <laughs> well it seems like every day there's like, okay we're not doing video. Event. Okay, maybe we will do video event. Okay, yeah. maybe we're gonna do it theatrically in Toronto. This guy's trying to get it here in Toronto. Every yeah, day are you part of that event, Jordan? Are you part of that event? Are you part of that event, Jordan? It was it was it's it's bullshit. It's not real. Yeah, no, he, he's just like, I'm going to do it. We're doing the day. I don't know how. Can anyone help me find the movie? Exactly. Like, I could do the same thing, but, like, who like who are you? I don't get this. <laughs> I, I just, I feel like 90% of us joined, because uh, I'm in the group, and I believe John, Brian is, just to yeah. see where this event goes. Is it Facebook? It's Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't have Facebook, but I saw it happening on my timeline, and mm-hmm. then people were reaming him out. Like, but it was it, it well it was originally reported as uh, Toronto sure says so. fuck it they're gonna show the interview but it's just the guy <laughs> saying I, wanna I want to find a movie and show it. Oh hey, my and God. He's not waiting. he's not George R R Martin he doesn't actually physically own a theater and might have the the power and influence to be able to get the movie. Like, like it's, it's so good. weird. Yeah it's it's like this is what it's resulting in right yeah. That mm-hmm. this one random guy saying he wants to show it becomes a headline. That's I feel crazy. like we're gonna we're gonna enter the new year and James Franco is gonna open an art exhibit, and it's just gonna be like showing the interview once yeah. a week. I cool. have I have I a could... coworker who's still convinced that it's a publicity stunt. Oh, to... That would be lunacy. If they found if it was revealed, uh, just kidding. This is a stunt. Come see the movie. People would lose their shit. But he still thought it through the 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 Adam Sandler uh, emails, the, uh, well, the, the Obama emails racist were, emails. Those emails were too real, clearly. Too real. To be a stunt. Like, yeah. That's yeah. Too like the Angelina Jolie stuff. The yeah. Again, the Channing Tatum all in caps. Ha 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 ha. ha. <laughs> it's too real for someone to make that up. And if they did, if that was actually a marketing campaign. Give that person all the money. It like, if, if, if this is all a marketing campaign, then it's the greatest marketing campaign of all Why? time. That will be Monday's announcement. I've never seen. It's coming out on Christmas, everyone. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> made me a fool. But the backlash against Sony <laughs> would be amazing. Oh yeah. Just like you played with the news for three weeks. You got Aaron Sorkin <laughs> to say that the journalists weren't being responsible. But hey. Oh my God. Uh, if only the newsroom was still on the air, we could see that story <laughs> in two years. Mm-hmm. No, I genuinely feel we will see a movie on this or yeah. like an HBO series in a couple of years. Absolutely. And I will be there with my popcorn and a fold-out chair. Maybe yeah. that time. Maybe that's maybe. how they. Sh- maybe that's how they show the movie. They say, "Okay, we're doing this documentary about the movie." Then in the middle of it, they just show the actual <laughs> movie for two hours. 
They cut. Well, yeah, so that's what happened with the interview, everyone. Wasn't that a crazy period? 2014 was weird, wasn't it? Oh, uh, no, it's it's not even a writer, a, the best writer, could have come up with this. No, no one would believe it. That's no. the, thing, the best stories are the things that no one would believe that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, is, is there anything else to talk about? Or I think we've, we've covered most of the bases. It, it's it's such a weird story that it's hard to to know what grasp to take of it or where to, to what angles to look at because it it's just, constantly it's evolving. It feels like there's going to be so much more happening. This is by oh, yeah. far not the end of it at all. This is just dipping our toes in the water at this point. Yeah, like we're talking about it right now, and I can go on Twitter after this and be like, this whole thing just changed. Yeah, exactly. They're releasing it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they're sending DVDs to personal homes. They're yeah. using a, they're using Redbox. Redbox is the exclusive carrier <laughs> of the interview. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Well, then, in that case, I, I want to thank everybody for being here, uh, especially Jordan uh, for thank being our thank special you. guest. Uh, and choosing us as at least one of the prized outlets to uh, share his knowledge of this movie. He, he's one of a select few hundred people, probably. So, so um, it, was, it was an honor. But actually, yeah, thank you for having me. It was great. Yeah. Uh, Brian, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter at CoconutPhone77. Jordan, where can people find you? At JordanApps on Twitter. And people should check out the uh, After SNL podcast. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are you, you recording later today? Uh, we have a guest on uh, that like is working this morning, so we're delaying to the later clock, which we haven't recorded at that time yet. So we'll see how that works. Cool. Um, but we should do like a thing. Yeah. 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 We uh, crossover. Maybe around. May, actually, uh, would would you uh, want to join us for a live? We're doing uh, gathering as many people into one physical location, like somebody's house or something, and doing a live. Podcast Watch. after the primetime special in February. Uh, possibly. Possibly, yeah. I'm going. I actually got tickets to the Kevin Hart show. I heard about oh. that. Yeah. Um, I'm not enthused as Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> we have one guy who's enthused because in our fantasy league, he that's like the the third host that he picked that really? is uh, leading an episode. Yeah. So we were on like the... we had picked like the first five weeks, or the first five hosts, we were pretty... I think I, I accurately picked who was going to host, and then ever since then, it's just been a mess. We've done pretty yeah. well. I think there's maybe three that we didn't get. I, mean, I didn't think Kevin Hart would host. I forgot that he had that movie coming out. We didn't have Silverman. We didn't have... Uh, I don't think anybody chose Hater. Chris yeah. Rock. No, yeah, no, Matt I, had Hater. Matt had Hater. Oh. It's been a weird uh, choosing year. Yeah, yeah. Like Silverman. promo, like promos. No, Silverman made sense. Chris Rock made sense. Amy Adams was like clearly promo for um, big guys. Yeah. Uh, and Kevin Hart will be for that fucking movie he has coming out. The Will Ferrell one. No, he has that other one with Josh Gad called The Wedding Ringer. I've Have never even heard of this movie. How, I the don't know Kevin movie. Hart movies. Like they just come out to me. I don't know why. <laughs> That's actually anyway. amazing. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll continue this conversation off air. But uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.